Hello, and welcome back to yet another video. This is the 12th episode of a story in which 10-year-old Naruto meets Minato from future and that turns Naruto's life upside down. As Naruto lives a happy life in which he is trained by Minato and later Kushina too. After you've finished watching, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. To begin, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get the party started, Hinata gulped while she looked at the door of the Uzumaki residence. Naruto didn't appear in the academy during the last days, she was worried about him. She looked at the big bento box with the food she prepared for Naruto and his father, it was the first time she came to visit them at their new house and courtesy rules said that good neighbors had to bring a present to the new ones during the first visit, usually some food. When she looked at the door her shyness arised and she felt compelled to turn away and go back home, but she managed to throw her insecurities away. She reminded the events of her life during the last days, the visit to Suna, Naruto meeting Gara and befriending him, saving him from the genjutsu that compelled him to kill his new friend, the battle against Shukaku. She trembled whenever she reminded that creature, to think that they managed to defeat the one-tailed by Juo. She couldn't believe how lucky they were to live to tell it, she still had nightmares where Shukaku appeared and buried her in sand. A small part of her understood now why the villagers told their children to stay away from Naruto, he had a monster inside him who was even more dangerous than the Tanuki but it was not an excuse for their sameful behavior towards him, if they had been crueler to Naruto perhaps he would have turned into a more horrible monster. Hinata banished those thoughts from her mind and thought about what happened after they saved Gara. They were told about a parallel fight between Naruto's father and another Jinchuriki, then Akatsuki striked, captured Gara, but Naruto's father and his comrades managed to save him with the help of Shikamaru, Shino, Tamari, and Konkuro, they also managed to bring back the San Daime Kaze Kage after the death of two Akatsuki members and the Yon Daime Kaze Kage. Shikamaru told her and Naruto the true story and they vowed to not tell it to anyone. For the rest of the world believed that the Yondame Kaze Kage sacrificed himself to bring back his predecessor, ending like a hero. When they returned to Konoha the citizens already knew about the fights. Her family bombed her and Neji with questions, they explained the best they could and at the end the elders looked seemed to be satisfied about their performance in the fight although they didn't express it. However her sister Hanabi now looked at her with awe and admiration making Hinata felt uneasy, she still was not used to praises and having another person admiring her was new to the Shai Hyuga. Then Kumagakura returned Uncle Hizashi's body. She reminded the funeral, with all the clan members from both branches attending at it. She was surprised to see that Neji and her father were in the verge of tears when the coffin descended to the hole. However the biggest surprise was the appearance of Neji's mother, Kyoko, who got out from her seclusion in the branch house to attend in the funeral. It was the first time she saw her aunt, whose resemblance with Hanabi was incredible, Hinata found out later that she was her mother's younger sister. After the funeral Neji introduced his mother formally to Hanabi and her. And last but not less important was the return of Naruto and his father bringing Jiraiya-sama and Lady Tsunade with them. Just after the Jiraiya-sama was named Godaim Hokage, she found a bit strange that the first decision her father took just after he was told the news was ordering to put guards in the clan's onsen. But the biggest surprise came when Lady Tsunade asked her to become one of her apprentices by Naruto's recommendation. Now she and the other apprentices would have to spend half of their academy time learning the secrets of medic ninjutsu. At first she was a little afraid that they would be left behind those students who attended the academy full time but Lady Tsunade told them that it would be the opposite thing. Hinata felt delighted, she loved the idea that she would learn something specific to help others instead of hurting them. But when Lady Tsunade told her that she needed her father's permission to have her educational program changed she feared that he would say no because Hyugas were notorious for being a clan of fighters. Flashback Hyashi looked at the document where Tsunade asked for his permission to take Hinata as one of her disciples explaining the training program that she would take. Hinata looked at him worried about his response, it was not a secret that many Hyugas didn't consider medic nins as true ninjas, just a support for the true ones. Her father took a good time to read the changes that her academic training would have until finally he told her his decision. He looked at her eyes. Hinata do you really want to be a medic nin? Asked him. Why yes, father I would love to be one. If you let me study under Tsunade I'll promise you that you won't be disappointed, responded her in a very serious tone. The elder Hyuga looked at his daughter surprised by her firm reaction. So, she really wants it, thought. Very well, I'll allow you to become a medic nin if it doesn't interfere with your development in the Hyuga arts. As long as you manage to progress as a Jukin user without problem you can do the same as medic nin in parallel. Just remember this, your Jukin is your main priority. If you can't take both trainings you'll have to renounce medic training," said Hyashi. 
Hinata was so happy with her father's response that she hugged him squealing like she was a toddler again. Thank you. Thank you, dad, exclaimed before realizing what she was doing. The last time she acted like this her mother was still alive, thought Hiyashi. Hinata released her father. S sorry, father. I I shouldn't have done it, apologized Hinata returning to her usual self. Hiyashi felt bad. He was the one who instilled Hinata to not making those expressions of affection because in a clan of emotion readers like Hayuga's it was seen a sign of weakness. He missed those days where Hinata was just his little girl and not the heiress of the clan. There's no need to apologize, Hinata. This wouldn't be nothing compared with the elder's reaction when I tell them about my decision, said Hiyashi. W what if they refuse to accept it? Asked Hinata concerned. Don't worry about that. The will have to accept it. Neji also received an offer from Tsunade for being her disciple but he rejected it. If we refused another offer from her it could be seen as an insult to the Senju clan, it would be also an insult to the Uzumaki clan because they recommended you. In fact receiving training from the legendary Tsunade is a honor and many of them will see it like that, responded Hyashi with a calculating smile. And flashback Hinata looked at the door, took some air and knocked. While knocking, she heard some voices coming from the other side. Ouch! Why you have done it? Asked a voice she recognized as Naruto's father's. How could you have thought that mom was a boy? Look at her, she is the most beautiful woman in the world, exclaimed a voice she recognized as Naruto's. For a moment Hinata thought that she heard a female voice giggling inside the house but she couldn't confirm that. Seconds later Naruto opened the door, his face brightened when he saw that it was her. Hello, Hinata. Nobody came here to visit us before, I'm glad to see that you were the first one. I have something wonderful to tell you said Naruto excited. Naruto practically dragged her into the house and closed the door. Dad, it's Hinata and she came alone, there's no need to wear the mask, said Naruto. Oh, it's you Hinata? Welcome to our house, said Minato appearing from a door accompanied by a woman who was holding hands with him. The young girl looked shocked at the woman, who was smiling at her, the redhead woman had the longest mane she ever saw, reaching the rear part of her thighs. She had the face and the skin of a woman in her mid-twenties but her green eyes told her that she was older than she appeared, beautiful eyes that were identical to Naruto's in shape but in green color. She was identical to the person of the pick that Hinata's father gave her when he told her about the mission. S she is the spitting image of N Naruto-kun's mother, thought in awe. W who is she? Babbled her. Naruto took Hinata by the hand and lead her towards his parents without problem. Hinata-chan, this is my mother, Kushina Uzumaki. Mom. This is my best friend Hinata Hayuga, said Naruto oblivious to the fact that Kushina's eyes were locked on Hinata's. Before Hinata could react, she was embraced by a squealing Kushina. Hinata-chan. I'm so happy to see you. You don't know how much I have been craving for us finally meeting each other, exclaimed Kushina while she squeezed the poor Hinata to the point that she almost suffocated her. S she is really Naruto's mother? But how? Thought Hinata while she tried to breathe. Kushina finally realized that she was going to kill the poor girl and released her. A are you really alive? N Naruto-kun told me that you died during the QB's attack. W what happened? Muttered Hinata. Kushina calmed down and looked at her with sad eyes and a faint smile. The young Hayuga quickly realized that it was something Naruto's mother didn't crave to talk about. However Kushina spoke. It is a very long story, Hinata-chan. It will be better if we take a seat, said the redhead. The Uzumakis spend the next hour telling Hinata about Kushina's existence as a ghost looking after Naruto as she could, omitting the saddest details or the fact that Kushina knew about her spying on her son. Kushina, Minato and Naruto explained Hinata about how Kushina traveled back in time with Minato and how he acquired the ability to see her. Finally Hinata was about how Minato sealed her within him and created a new body for her. At the end of the story Hinata couldn't resist it anymore and exploded in tears. Kushina's torment was the saddest thing she ever heard, to think that she was unable to touch her child, to tell him that he was not alone, seeing how he suffered and being unable to help him. When Hinata thought that she could have helped Naruto, that she was able to do what Kushina couldn't she felt unworthy for craving for her son. However she felt really happy for Naruto, not only she regained his father but also his mother. She was not surprised that they didn't get out from home during last days, Naruto surely wanted to become acquainted with his mother. Minato and Kushina's love story also touched her, a love that surpassed the barriers of time and death. Almost two decades separated and unable to touch each other when they finally re-encounter each other. Now they were together again. Sharing a part of each his other's soul, closer than any couple would ever dream. She felt that somebody was beginning to embrace her, she accepted the hug and wept on said person's shoulder.
Naruto felt uneasy while he embraced Hinata, he didn't expect that Hinata would take his mother's story so badly until his mother whispered him that Hinata probably reminded her own mother and was asking herself why she didn't her back too and he had to console her. Naruto felt guilty for reminding that pain to Hinata and rushed to bring her solace. When Hinata calmed down she finally realized that she was embracing Naruto and blushed turning pink. Aw, aren't they cute, Minkun? They make such a lovely couple, commented Kushina making sure that they heard it. Naruto blushed while Hinata turned completely red and realized that she was giving them a very bad impression. Jiga menna I. I I shouldn't have behaved like that, excused herself. Why do you apologize, Hinata? Chan? You just showed us that you are a very sensible and empathic person and this is not bad. I'm very happy to see that my little Naru has a friend who cares so much about him, said Kushina with a motherly smile. Mom. Don't call me like that before others, protested Naruto embarrassed. Kushina began to tickle Naruto on his sensitive spots. It's a mother's privilege to treat her children like they were still toddlers, no matter their age. Tell me, Naruchan is it my right or do I have to aim to the armpits? Teased Kushina giggling while she tickled him in near the ribs. Okay. Okay. I give up. You can call me like you want but please, stop, begged Naruto trying to contain the laughs. Hinata giggled at the scene, they looked like they were together all life, something that was truth to a point. Kushina probably was the person who knew most about Naruto than anybody else. Kushina turned her attention to Hinata. Hinata-chan, you came there just in time, we were going to play some games that needed a fourth person, we were about to use a cage bunshine to do the job but with you there it wouldn't be necessary, said Kushina. Before Hinata could say anything, she was dragged by the older woman to the house's main lounge. They played some card games where Hinata had some advantage thanks to the Hyuga's ability to read each other persons. When they skipped to quiz games Minato had the advantage thanks to his great general knowledge, Naruto for his part excelled in games that implied gambling and Kushina did the same in games where the objective was to guess things. Later, they headed to the house's yard and did more physical games like the boys doing a race with one of the girls won their back, something that made Hinata blush a lot, or pulling a rope by opposite directions. It was one of the funniest days on Hinata's life. The final game was an idea that consisted in a race by pairs where the racers from the same team would carry an egg between their foreheads. The adults looked amused how Hinata turned completely red for having her face so close to Naruto's, who thought that she was like that because the effort of the previous games. I wouldn't be surprised if their egg turned to be boiled at the end of the race, commented Kushina. The race was through all the house. At first it looked like Minato and Kushina were about to win but she tripped at the last moment, letting Naruto and Hinata win. Yes. We won. Hinata, you're the best, exclaimed Naruto letting their egg fall. Realizing his mistake, he tried to catch it but he ended smashing it on Hinata's jacket. Gomenne Zasi, Hinata-chan, apologized him. I it's nothing. Naruto-kun, responded Hinata still dazzled by Naruto's last praising. Come with me so I could give you some clothes to change yourself. I have something from the time I was your age, offered Kushina while she dragged Hinata to the house's attic. Kushina looked in a chest and seconds later she took a box with a small seal on it, inside the box there was one of the most beautiful kimonos Hinata ever saw. It was red, with white flowers designs and it had extremely wide sleeves, as a princess kimono. Yes, this will fit you perfectly. It was from my childhood in Whirlpool country, you can keep it for yourself, said Kushina. Kikushina-san. I can't accept a gift like this. It should be for a future daughter of yours, protested Hinata. Please don't call me Kushina-san, I would love if you call me mom, so you wouldn't have any problem receiving the kimono, responded Kushina. Hinata turned red again, the only way she could call Kushina like that would be if she and Naruto became a couple. Kushina noticed Hinata's uneasiness. You can keep calling me Kushina if you like but please, accept the kimono, it was made for beautiful girls like you, not for being stored in an attic, said Kushina. Hinata nodded and thanked Kushina for the amazing gift. D does she think that I'm beautiful? Thought Hinata twitching her fingers while some demi-clones created by Kushina took her dirty clothes and helped her to dress with the kimono. When they finished she noticed that Kushina was also wearing another beautiful kimono and changed her hairstyle. Hinata looked amazed at the beauty she had before. Why you look really beautiful, Kushina-san. But. Why did you change clothes too? Asked her. Thank you. You look beautiful too, Hinata-chan. More than I when I was your age. I dress like this because you are our guest and we must look presentable for the dinner. I can't wait to see if the food you brought us is as good as Naruto said, commented Kushina while she headed to the dining room. 
Hinata blushed with a small smile at Kushina's comment and followed her. They found Naruto and Minato waiting for them, dressed with the western-style clothes they wore during the dinner in the Hyuga compound. It's the same kimono you wore during our first date, thought Minato. Yes, I knew that you would love it, responded her. Naruto looked speechless at the girls, he knew that his mother as the last survivor of royal family was a princess but she never thought about her like one until he saw her dressed like one. And Hinata now dressed with that kimono looked more effeminate and cute than ever. One of Kushina's hair clips fell to the ground and Minato took it. Let me place it back, said him while he got near Kushina, who nodded. When he finished, they looked at each other's eyes and shared a kiss. Hinata looked away blushing while Naruto did the same. They enjoyed the dinner made by Hinata. Kushina was very happy to see that her future daughter-in-law was such a great cook. Oh, Kami this is delicious, the future Naruto was right, you would make a wonderful wife, commented Kushina. The poor Hinata almost choked her food. I think, that you are playing matchmaker too fast, thought Minato. Really? I didn't notice it, responded Kushina looking at her husband with innocent eyes. Hinata decided to change subject quickly. Uh, Anyo. How are you going to explain your return to the village, Kushina-san? Asked her. We almost have a reasonable explanation ready, Hinata-chan, we just need some external help. We also plan to be discreet about my return at the beginning, explained Kushina. The dinner continued without problems and finally Hinata left the Uzumaki residence after promising them that she would visit them again. The girl smiled while she headed to her home, it was a never-to-be-forgotten day and now she had a female role with Kushina. However at the end of the walk she realized something. How I am going to explain about this clothing at home? Thought. Tsunade headed to the Hokage's office. While she went over the familiar quarters she reminded that she was no longer the Hokage, not that honor was on her teammates shoulders. She let a small giggle out when, after hours of discussions, Minato and her teamed up to propose Jiraiya arguing that he was the first choice for Yo and Aimei, God I'm in the only one of the room who never was Hokage. When she reached the door to the Hokage's office she heard some voices coming from there. No, put it more to the right, be careful, it's getting crooked. Ah. Perfect, said Jiraiya's voice. Tsunade heard Izumo and Kotetsu agreeing with Jiraiya saying that it looked really good. I see. He must be making a redecoration to the office. Probably he wants to be more comfortable in his new workplace. I'll lend him a hand, thought the medic. The walls were covered by posters and pics of young women who had the common particularity of their lack of clothes. If the pics were not enough, the mega pervert installed a TV with a video recorder in the room and a copy holder full of perverted tapes. The icing on the cake were the bookshelves with a collection of perverted books that Kakashi would kill for. They look really nice, commented Izuma with a perverted grin. Yes, they are, especially this one, commented Jiraiya pointing to the pic of a green haired who had a body who could compete with Tsunade's. Suddenly the temperature of the room dropped considerably. Jiraiya and his subordinates turned slowly to see Tsunade with very serious face. Izumo and Kotetsu almost wet their pants at Tsunade's expression, especially when she focused her attention on them. You too. Could you leave the room please? I have a very important thing to discuss with the Hokage. Alone, said in a very courteous tone. The Chai Yunins left the room in a flash while Jiraiya looked at them in despair. Don't leave me alone. I'm your Hokage thought with tears on his eyes. Tsunade grabbed him by the neck. What the hell do you, you think you are doing? This is the Hokage's office. What do you think the clients would think about Konoha if they see this place decorated like a sex shop? Growled Tsunade. I, I already thought a about that. P please P push the button below the D desk, responded Jiraiya trying to breath. Tsunade examined the desk and found a red button resourcefully occult. When she pushed it, the walls with the pics turned 180 degrees appearing like did before Jiraiya decorated them while the TV and the holster were replaced by file drawers. The room now looked exactly as always has been. Tsunade sweat dropped and released Jiraiya. See Tsunade Haim? The clients will receive a proper impression from Konoha, you don't have to worry about it, said Jiraiya. The medic nin sent him a small glare. Do what you want. I came here to tell you about a rumor that is circulating in town, they said that tried to say Tsunade before tripping with a roll of adhesive tape. She hustled Jiraiya in her fall by accident, making them end on top of the desk with Tsunade over Jiraiya. Three curious things happened. First, when Jiraiya saw that was Tsunade was pouncing towards him, he interposed his hands in a defensive stance, so when they ended over the desk, said hands were touching unwillingly Tsunade's breasts. Two, their faces ended only a few centimeters from each other's, they looked at the other's eyes blushing like a certain Hyuga girl. 3. 
Hiruz and Sarutobi got into the office just in that moment. He looked at his former students for a few seconds with a poker face, he didn't look surprised at all, it was not the first time he caught somebody on that desk playing moms and dads. The first ones were Orochimaru and the daughter of a diplomat from Suna, when they were negotiating peace after the war. The second ones were Minato and Kushina, just the day after he said to the blonde that he would become Hokage. The third ones were his own teammates and counselors, Koharu and Homura, an image that he would prefer to forget. He couldn't understand what sort of power that desk had to be so used that way although he recognized that it was surprisingly comfortable, Asuma was conceived there after all. D this is not what it appears, S sensei, babbled Tsunade. And what other thing could it be? Thought Sarutobi sweat dropping looking at Jiraiya's perverted grin, who just realized where his hand were. Tsunade got up quickly and tidied her up while Jiraiya was letting his imagination go free. It was about time that these two ended together. They must be still in the phase where couples deny their relationship to other people. I'll be nice and change the subject, thought Sarutobi. Anyways, I came here to ask you for permission to tell Sasuke Uchiha about that issue concerning his clan, said the old ex-gage. Tsunade and Jiraiya forgot about the desk incident immediately. Are you sure about this, sensei? In the future Sasuke, proved to be mentally unstable, betrayed Konoha and became a dangerous criminal, said Jiraiya. Sarutobi nodded. Yes, I'm aware of that. But he didn't become that Sasuke yet, we are in time to save him this time. When Minato told me about the things that happened in the future because I let Orochimaru escape I feel that it is my responsibility to prevent them, said Sarutobi. Jiraiya sighed. I see that you are completely decided to go with it. Okay. You can go on with your project concerning the Uchiha. Talking about projects, how are things with the new medical program, Tsunade Haim? Asked Jiraiya. Tsunade's face brightened when the subject was mentioned. It is going better than I imagined. As you know, instead of taking rookie genins for trainings, I took academy students from the last classes. From Naruto's class I got Sakura, Ino, and Hinata. At first I thought that Sakura would be still an useless fangirl because Sasuke was still in the village and she wouldn't have the motivation she had in the future about being strong fought bringing him back, but it looks like those events in Suna showed her how drawn away was her compared to others in reality. Something similar happened with Ino. However Hinata is the most motivated, not surprising after Naruto said that he recommended her. From the last class I tried to recruit Neji but he refused. But I found a boy and girl who are very promising and I got a great surprise with Haku, who already had a vast knowledge of medicine and field experience, said Tsunade happily. Jiraiya and Sarutobi noticed how enthusiastic was Tsunade. They never have seen like that since Dan was still alive. I'm very glad, hi. But, what do their families think about their children having their academic time cut for being subjected to an experimental program? Asked Sarutobi. Well, Sakura's parents were very happy for her daughter receiving training from me to become a medic, they said that the knowledge she was going to get would let her work at the hospital when she finally realizes the risks of ninja life and retires as Kunoichi, the parents of the students of the upper class had similar thoughts. The Yamanakas for their part promised that they would give Ino special training to heal psychological damage and make her a more complete ninja. Zabuza said that medic ninjutsu would be very useful for Haku. Finally the Hyugas accepted to have Hinata receiving medic training with the condition that it wouldn't interfere in her training in the Hyuga arts, that are the ones that really matter. With all the potential they have at their disposal and they are wasting it in their Taijutsu style. Pompous ignorance, growled Tsunade. What do you mean? Asked Jiraiya. Tsunade got near the window and looked at Konoha. Before ninja village were formed and clans were independent, clans had to train their own medic nins, obviously most clans didn't have medic nins in their files and they had to rely on first aid and more traditional medicine, the few medic nins who were too valuable to risk their lives in battle and were kept in the clans as refuges. The Hyugas was the only clan that never had problem with scanniness of medic nins thanks to their very high chakra control. In fact their Byakugan let them make surprising discoveries about the human body and was a superb tool for diagnosis and healing. In fact ancient Hyuga medic nins were much better than most medic nins we have now in Konoha, commented Tsunade. What? If Hyugas has such potential as medic nins why there are not Hyuga medics now? Asked Naruto. The reason was because Hyugas abandoned medic ninjutsu was their stupid pride. At the beginning they were a clan of trackers, healers and assassins. However everything changed when they developed the Juken. This fighting style was so effective that Hyugas were soon known, respected and admired as powerful fighters. They were so proud of Jukin that they made it obligatory for all members. Medics were seen as weaklings and they only trained the minimum numbers required for the clan's survival. 
When the Hyuga clan joined the newly formed Konoha they renounced to have medic nins now that that work would be done by the village's own medics. At least they decided to donate the scrolls with all the knowledge they accumulated to the village. Thanks to my position as the Shodai Hokaye's granddaughter I had access to those scrolls and I became the medic nin I am now, said Tsunade. Jiraiya, Sarutobi, Minato, Kushina and Naruto looked surprised at the elder blonde. Thinking about it. Naruto was the first one to speak. That means that Hinata-chan could end surpassing you, isn't it? Asked Naruto. Yes, it is. For that reason I have to make sure that she not only becomes a medic of remarkable skill, but also a powerful fighter. She would establish a good precedent and could make more Hyugas take the medic nin path, said Tsunade. Don't worry, Ba-chan, Hinata-chan will be so good that all Hyugas will be asking you to be your apprentices, said Naruto while Kushina agreed. Yes, I hope so, Naruto, Kushina said Tsunade. The elders ninjas finally realized that there was more people in the room than the beginning of their chatting. Jiraiya, Tsunade and Sarutobi looked at Naruto, Minato, and Kushina, especially the last. K Kushina? I is it really you? Babbled Jiraiya. S so the R rumors I heard A about Arashi having a wife are true. B but I never thought that it could be you, whispered Tsunade. The sun daimyo looked at her with indifference. Oh. Hello Kushina, it's good to see you alive again greeted Sarutobi. Everyone looked at him sweat dropping. What? I saw a lot of strange things in my life. After one assumes that Minato resurrected in the future and traveled in time to this period bringing some allies with him it's very hard to be surprised with anything, commented Sarutobi. The redhead giggled and gave a hug to the X-Gage. You are truly the god of Shinobi, Ji-san. Thank you very much for taking care of my Naru all these years. You are a true inspiration for him, whispered Kushina at the verge of tears. I'm very happy to see you alive too, responded Sarutobi enjoying the hug. Kushina then hugged Tsunade. Thank you for being so nice with Naruto in the future. You were the closest thing he had to a mother. If it is not a trouble. Would you like to be his godmother? Whispered to Tsunade's ear. I I would be very h honored, babbled Tsunade. Kushina then looked at Jiraiya and opened her arms. The pervert cage headed to her smiling, ready to hug her. However, Instead of a hug he received the most horrible kick in the nuts ever seen in Konoha. Stupid pervert. What the hell was I thinking when we chose you to take care of Naruto? Do you think that Minato was hard when you met him again? That's nothing compared to what I'm going to do with you, you censored pervert, roared the blonde. Meanwhile, Izumo and Kotetsu were returning to the office when they heard Jiraiya's painful screams. Oh my. Tsunade-sama is still pounding him, commented Kotetsu. I I think that we should go into the hospital. Reserve a room and tell the doctors to be prepared, said Izumo. That day Naruto learned why Kiba and Shikamaru were so afraid of their mothers when they were angry. Minutes ago he received a message from the Hokage telling him to go to the Uzumaki residence for a secret meeting. Naruto received him and lead him to the house's main hall where a demi-clones who looked like a young maid greeted the special Jonin with a smile and brought a him a drink. More maids were attending the rest of the called people for the meetime. The girls were beautiful but nothing compared with the woman he met that morning. She was a beautiful female with long red hair and green eyes. If there was something that Ebisu could presume was that he knew who were the prettiest women in Konoha, although he would never admit it, and that one was definitively a new face. She reminded him strongly about somebody he knew but he couldn't tell exactly who. She was talking with Konohamaru like she always knew him. Ebisu saw his chance and introduced himself as Konohamaru's instructor telling that he was going to invite his student to lunch and extended the invitation to her. Women always liked men who were nice with kids. Unfortunately the woman excused herself saying that she was going to have lunch with her husband and son. While she left Konohamaru commented in a loud voice that he should use more effective methods to get a date, that she was the fourth woman that rejected to go with them with an excuse like that. The indiscreet honorable grandson was going to have some very interesting training sessions during next week. He thought about the purpose of the meeting while he adjusted his glasses. Perhaps it was about the rumors that said that Arashi Uzumaki, who in reality was the Yondai Mei. Married again Ebisu was the first one to arrive to the meeting but soon more people got into the room. The Anbu known as Bear was one of them. Hiyashi contemplated the decoration of the house while he thought about the latest events. Last night Hinata came home wearing a very expensive kimono, she was not the type of girl who spent her money and things like that, and anyways, there was not way she could have afforded it with her payment. At the end his shy daughter said that it was a present from the Uzumaki family that formerly belonged to Naruto's mother and they gave it to her because there was nobody in their home who could use it. 
the elders would have freaked out if the clothes Hinata received were just normal clothes because Hayugas wouldn't accept used stuff from others like they were a family with money problems. But, according to Lady Miho, that kimono was something completely different, not only it was a very beautiful piece of art, probably it was the most valuable article of clothing for girls at Hinata's age existing currently in Konoha. Not only that, it was also a family inheritance of a formerly royal family. Receiving a gift like that was a great honor for the Hayugas. At the end, a very blushing Hinata was congratulated by the women while Hanabi looked at her with an envy that disappeared at the moment she found out that the kimono would be eventually hers. The Hayaga leader looked at the other occupants of the room who were the Chunin teacher Umino Iruka his girlfriend Mitarashi Anko, who was talking with him and the special Joni Nebisu who was talking now with a civilian man who seemed to be the owner of a ramen stand. More people arrived. Hyashi looked surprised when the other guests for the meeting happened to be Nara Shikamaru, Aburame Shino, Yamato, Hitake Kakashi, Momochi Zabuza, his son Momochi Haku, the Anbu Captain Niko, who in reality was Uzuki Yugao, Saru Tobi Hiruzen, the son Daime Hokage, Senju Tsunade and her student Shizun and finally a heavily bandaged Jiraiya, the god I'm an actual Hokage, accompanied by three totes. Hyashi recognized them as Fukasaku, Shima, and Game of Unta. It was rare to see a titanic summon as the toad chief taking the size of a regular toad but necessary if they wanted to keep the meeting in secret. He was completely confused when he saw the three next persons that Naruto brought to the room happened to be his eldest daughter Hinata, his nephew Neji and his sister-in-law Kyoko. Hinata seemed very surprised to see them there too, she appeared to know something, perhaps they should have a talk at home. He looked at the rest of the guests. Why these people were called? What does have in common a time traveler like Shikamaru with him? And he realized it. Wait. Everyone here knows Arashi, Uzumaki's secret. Does it mean that Hinata, Neji and Kyoko know about it too? Thought the Hayuga while he stared at his family members. We are going definitely to have a chat at home, thought. Finally Arashi appeared holding hands with a redhead woman. The couple was accompanied with Naruto. Kyashi recognized the woman immediately as his wife. D that's I impossible. Ichiraku Tuchi looked at her like he saw a ghost while Ebisu looked at them completely pallid. The Hokage intervened. Finally everybody is here, many of you noticed that we are among the ones who know who is Arashi Uzumaki in reality, the only absents are our allies from Suna and my Suzanbu squad. I assume that you also heard about some rumors concerning Arashi's civil status. That's the main reason because we are here. Minato you can take off your mask, same goes for the rest of the masked ones, this is not a Nanbu convention, said Jiraiya. Arashi took off his mask revealing himself as Minato Namikaze. Yugao also took hers revealing her beautiful face. The rest of the members of the Hand of Death took example, everyone looked at Kakashi with curiosity just for being disappointed when they saw that he had another mask underneath the usual one. Hyashi was the last one to take off his. T-1000, babbled Hinata completely surprised when she saw her father. Hyashi sama said Neji trying to keep the composture. Good evening, brother-in-law greeted Kyoko before looking to another way. Hyashi was not surprised by her behavior, he was a living reminiscent of her deceased husband and the one who should have died on Hisashi's place. He didn't was surprised to discover that Neiji and Kyoko knew about Minato, the ex-cage probably thought that his friend's family deserved to know that Hisashi was fine in the afterlife, however the Hyuga leader couldn't explain why his daughter knew the secret too. His familiars and him would have a very long chat. Minato began to talk and everybody focused their attention on him and the person at his side, some of you already recognized her, for the rest, let me introduce you to my wife Kushina Uzumaki, said Minato. Hello everyone, I'm Kushina Uzumaki. Naruto's mom and Minato's wife. And not, I am not a ghost. I'm completely alive and back, it's a very long story, greeted Kushina with a happy grin. K Kushina? I it's really you? Babbled Tuchi in the verge of tears. Yes. It's me, old man, exclaimed her while she embraced the surprised chef. Thank you very much for being so nice with my Naruto. I'll never forget it, whispered to his ear. I it was nothing. Jay just make sure to visit my stand a pair of times a week and I'll be happy, responded him blushing a little. Iruka looked dumbfounded at her. A are you a really Naruto's mother? Asked the teacher. Kushina responded him with another hug. Yes I am, Iruka sensei. Thank you, very much for bear up with my son's mischiefs and caring for him, said her. I I was just doing my J job, responded Iruka blushing. Stop embracing my man. You already have yours and he seems to be the jealous type, said Anko a joking tone. Kushina proceeded to greet everybody in similar ways. 
Ebisu was completely pale and nervous. He behaved with a lot of politeness when she greeted him. I I tried to flirt with the Y Yondaime's wife, I if she tells him I'm dead, thought scared. Shikamaru felt that he needed a smoke. Shino took off his glass and looked at her making sure that his eyes were not lying to him finally revealing everyone how his eyes looked. To everyone's letdown it happened the Aburame just had black almond eyes, not segmented ones as a bug or a pair of holes where Kikai bugs peeped out. The rest of the guests just looked at Kushina with disbelief and surprise. W weren't you supposed to be dead, Lady Kushina? Asked Haku. She looked at the boy smiling. Yes I was, Haku-kun. I was going to explain everything now. But please, call me Aunt Kushina, we have a distant relationship but a relationship after all, said her. The boy nodded reluctantly. Although he was aware that his family was related with the Senju and the Uzumaki clans, he lived a good part of his life as a farmer and still felt a bit out of place when he was reminded of his heritage. Kushina finally began to tell her story. Beginning with her death, her existence as a ghost looking after Naruto, a brief description of the alternate timeline, Minato's return in the future, the time travel, Minato's acquired ability to see ghosts, the ceiling and finally the creation of her new body combining the five elements with the side effect of the link between them. She only skipped the most intimate or painful parts of the story because they were only her family's concern. When she finally finished almost everybody had tears in their eyes. The women rushed to Kushina to embrace her while the men tried to look impassable without success. Naruto and Hinata were crying too although they knew the story beforehand, with Hinata sobbing on Naruto's chest, something that Hiyashi didn't take very well. What? I should be the one consoling my girl, not you. Well, you are affected too and you are not taking advantage of the situation so I'll let you pass this time, thought Hiyashi while in tears. Zizabuza sama a are you crying too? Asked Haku. And no. It's just because the smoke in the room. Isn't it, Danzo-san? Asked Zabuza with teary eyes. Yeah. We should have opened a window, responded Tenzo while tears covered his face. I it's my fault. I overcharged the pipe, said Gamabunda also crying. Jirai looked at his student and his wife. Minato, Kushina. Let me write a book about your story, please, ask to them. Just as he said that, a killing intent began to stifle the room. W. Wait, it won't be a book about you, just a book about a couple where one of them dies turns into a ghost and protects the other. I'll make enough changes that nobody could relate the book to you and I promise that I won't add unnecessary bed scenes, said Jiraiya in a defensive position, just the needed ones, thought. The Uzumaki couple seemed to calm down. Do what you want, Jiraiya. But before publishing anything you'll give us the original in order to get our approval, said Minato, and prepare to meet the consequences if we don't like what we read, said Kushina finishing the phrase. Impressive. That link they lets them share their thoughts if they want, thought many of the ninjas. Jirai decided to change the subject. Minato, could you show me the room with the seals that you used to revive Kushina? Perhaps you didn't realize it, but creating a blood clone you managed to accomplish something that even Sage of the Six Paths himself couldn't manage to do it with all his power, said Jirai. Sorry, but we decided to delete the seals and then wall in the room. We realized that somebody like Orochimaru could achieve immortality if he got access to the secrets that said room contained just by cloning himself and transferring his soul in the process. It's a secret too dangerous to exist, said Minato. Jiraiya saw the reasoning in Minato's words and agreed with him. In reality Minato just put a wall in the room's door and painted over it, the seals were intact for a time they could be needed again. All clans had to keep their secrets secret and faking about its destruction was a good way to protect a secret that was already told about. Tsunade accosted Kushina. You should let me do a medical check to you and see how your cloned body really is, how it work and its capabilities. I'm not telling this only because medical curiosity but we should also check if you could have a health problem that you didn't find about, reasoned Tsunade. Kushina agreed. Yes, it would be nice, but I don't think you would find anything wrong. With this body I feel healthier, more energetic and more alive than with my original one, said Kushina. Shizune intervened. Kushina-san. I have a question. How are you going to tell the village about your return? I also realize that you look about your mid-twenties but you are supposed to be in your latest thirties, said the young woman. Kushina looked at her with an astute smile. Minato and I already thought about that but we will need some help to make a believable our story, said Kushina. What kind of help? Asked Jiraiya. Well, for your part you only have to summon the council tomorrow where I'll come up in order to clarify those rumors about my return. And remind them that Konoha messed with the wrong mother, said with a murderous face. Jiraiya gulped, 
reminding the beating Kushina gave him. For first time in his life he was sorry for the council. Koharu and Homura noticed that they were the first ones to arrive at the meeting while they took their seats. Hurzago Jirai told them that there would be a special meeting with the council concerning some of the latest events in the village. The sage told them that the meeting will have so important matters that it would have the presence of the Fire Lord himself. The rest of the councillors arrived at the room, because Konoha's best client would be there, everyone was wearing their finery, at least by the civilian part, most ninjas just wore new uniforms or at least clean ones, only the most traditional clans had their ninjas dressed exceptionally like Hyuga Hyashi or the representative of the Kurama clan. There was also Amui Shizio, the historician who reminded everybody about Orochimaru. Finally the Fire Lord arrived followed by Sarutobi Asuma and a pair of his own advisors. The Lord took one of the heads of the table, flanked by his advisors and Asuma standing behind him. The ninjas noticed that Asuma was sporting the bandana that identified him as one of the guardians of fire so as long as the daimyo stayed in Konoha, Asuma would be under his direct command, not the Hokaye's. The advisors were uneasy by the presence of the Lord. It had something to do about the rumors of Kushina Uzumaki being alive. The problem began when that Orochimaru wannabe revealed that the brat's mother was the last surviving member of Whirlpool Country's royal family and the fact that the Senju clan descended from them. While Konoha people was shocked by the Uzumaki's relationship with one of the founding clans of the village, the Fire Country's authorities were more concerned by the existence of a descendant of the rulers of Whirlpool Country. After the last ninja war, Whirlpool Country's territory integrated into Fire Countries without any problem and was peaceful for years. The presence of a descendant of said rulers could alter that peace. When the Fire Lord received the news of the QB container being said descendant, he called for a meeting between him and Sarutobi, who was still Hokage at that time. The Sundaime managed to convince the Lord that the child didn't have any intention of becoming another feudal lord, that he wanted to be a ninja and become Hokage. The advisors had to agree with him, the Lord wouldn't have to worry about the boy. But the day before yesterday a woman whose description matched Kushina Uzumaki's appeared and attacked all those women who wanted to have a special mission with Arashi claiming that he was hers and him acknowledging her as his wife. It was obvious that the Lord finally decided to clarify by himself what was going on with the Uzumakis and came to the meeting to find out. They interrupted their thoughts when they saw the Hokage Jiraiya accompanied by Sarutobi Hiruzen, Senju Tsunade, and Uzumaki Arashi. Jirai took seat at the other head of the table, with Tsunade and Sarutobi at his sides and Arashi standing behind him leaving the seat reserved for the Uzumaki clan unoccupied, something that didn't go unnoticed by anybody, especially by the elders. Hokage-sama, why Uzumaki-san is not taking a seat and why Tsunade-sama and Sandaime-sama are on your sides? Asked Homura. Jirai looked at them with a serious face. It's very simple. I decided to appoint my predecessor and my old teammate as my new advisors. Sarutobi sensei as the former Hokage knows better than anyone about the Hokage job Konoha's internal affairs. Tsunade Haim by her part, has a great knowledge of how things are outside Konoha thanks to the years she spent traveling through the elemental nations. She is also the best person to take the role of Hokage if something happened to me so it is wise to listen to her advice, said Jiraiya. Sarutobi's ex-teammates paled. D that means that we are, babbled Koharu. Fired? Yes, you are. I want to thank you for all your years of loyal service to the village advising to Sarutobi Sensei. I realize that it would too inhuman to ask you to do the same for me at your age, for that reason I named new advisors. I didn't tell you before because I wanted to give you a surprise, you will keep your seats at the council as representative of your clans but you won't have to take the load of work that comes with the advisor job. I even organized a farewell party after the meeting, said Jiraiya innocently. The now ex-advisors were caught completely off guard and didn't know how to protest. They couldn't say that their successor were not suited for the job because it would mean that they proclaimed themselves better than an ex-cage and a Hokage candidate. I I feel very honored, Hokage-sama. I'm glad to see that I can leave my duty knowing that it will be in such competent hands, said Homura in a polite tone. S same goes for me. I don't have words to express my feelings, agreed Koharu. What about Arashi-san? Asked Donzo. Oh yes, Arashi-san. You know. When I got this job and read the summaries of the last council meetings I noticed that in the last three meeting there were a demise by heart attack, an aborted coup d'etat that ended with a councillor with his heart literally ripped from his body and a failed assassination attempt that ended with the perpetrator executed. For that reason I decided to use Arashi Uzumaki my personal bodyguard during the meetings, said Jiraiya. Everyone sweat dropped. Arashi was the main one responsible of those deaths and now he was going to be the one responsible for the security during the meetings. Okay. 
Now that everything is settled we can start with the main reason I called for this gathering. As you know, we are here to clarify the latest rumors concerning a certain clan of this village. Anybody wants to say something about it? Asked Jiraiya. Several counselors raised their hands. Sarutobi noticed that many of the counselors present were not the usual representative but the surrogates assigned by each clan in the case of the representative was not available. Jiraiya gave the word to a man on his late twenties who was one of those surrogates. Hokage-sama, is it true that you are going to take Naruto Uzumaki as your apprentice? Asked him. Yes, it's true, responded Jiraiya a bit surprised, that was not the question he expected. Jiraiya's affirmation shocked the surrogate counselors, who looked very with it without caring if they showed their disgust. The regular counselors looked unaffected by Jiraiya's words and focused their attention on Arashi. I see. The usual representatives were too scared of Minato and sent these fools who didn't witness how thin-skinned he is with anything that could concern his son. Poor fools, thought Sarutobi. The surrogate counselor got up. Hokage-sama, I must tell you that you made a bad decision. There are better choices like, tried to say before he was lifted some centimeters over the floor and began to choke and behave like somebody was suffocating him. The counselors noticed that Arashi was moving his right hand like he was squeezing something. Are you questioning the Hokage's decision? Or are you trying to sabotage my son's instruction? Anyways your lack of faith on your new Hokage is disappointing," said Arashi while he squeezed with more strength, making the counselor turn purple. Vader, I mean, Arashi, that's enough. Release him, ordered Jiraiya. Arashi nodded and made his few Uten clone to stop choking the counselor. The rest of the surrogate counselors looked at Arashi scared and decided to keep their opinions for themselves. Donzo mumbled a curse. The circumstances were not what he expected. He thought that Jiraiya would be easy to manipulate with Koharu and Homura being his advisors and his carefree attitude. But he had to put Sarutobi and Tsunade in their place. Not only that, but he also had to turn the old Uruzumaki into his bodyguard for the meetings. No one would dare to question Jiraiya's decisions having the merciless black angel staring at them. Jiraiya looked at the counselors. Now that my right to choose my own disciples has been confirmed we can go and clarify the other rumor. As you know, a person matching with the description of my bodyguard's deceased wife has appeared in Konoha. That's the reason because our honored daimyo is here, said the god daim. The fire lord nodded. Jirai looked at Arashi. Okay, bring her here, said. Arashi nodded, left the room and came back seconds later holding hands with a red-head woman wearing a very elaborated kimono that reminded the daimyo those that his wife and daughters possessed. Many men were fascinated by the beauty of the woman, while women looked at her with a slight envy. The ninjas barely recognized her as the tomboyish Kunoichi who used to hang up with Minato, Namikaze. Jiraiya smiled, she catched completely their attention. Ladies, gentlemen. Let me introduce yourselves to Lady Kushina Uzumaki, last descendant of Whirlpool Country's royal family and Kunoichi of Konoha, announced the Sanin. She looked at them with a cold grimace. Thank you, Hokage-sama. I would salute the rest but I don't have a reasonable motive to do it," said before taking the seat reserved for the Uzumakis. People began to whisper and murmur. Koharu got up. Wait a moment. Wasn't she supposed to be dead? Where was she all these years? Are you going to tell us that she lost her memory as her husband? How do we know that she is really who she proclaims? Asked the old woman. She felt some killing intent coming from the younger woman. I was critically injured while defending this village against the Kyubi. My husband found me when I was about to die and managed to keep me alive in secret until Tsunade Haim finally healed me," said Kushina. More murmurs followed her words. Excuse me, but could somebody give us a better explanation? Asked Shibiaburame. Funjutsu, said Arashi. Everyone looked at him. She was almost dead, she would have died if I had taken her to the hospital in that state. Using Funjutsu I managed to seal her into a scroll, keeping her in an stasis where time didn't pass so her state didn't aggravate. It also kept her from aging, the reason she looks like time didn't pass to her is because literally it didn't pass, her body is still in her twenties, said Arashi. More murmurs followed. Funjutsu can do that? Commented a civilian. That means that a ninja enough skilled in sealing whose teammates are injured could seal them, finish the mission, if he could, and then return to Konoha, where the medical team would have all the time they needed to prepare the procedure, commented Shikaku Nara. That comment made everybody shut up with awe. If more ninjas could do that, Konoha would have an important advantage over the rival villages. Most ninjas only see Funjutsu as a mean to store equipment. I thought that Konoha would be more aware of its potential after that day, commented Kushina in a spiteful tone. Nobody replied, 
they realized that potential when Arashi began to display his skills since he came back to Konoha. The Fire Lord looked at Kushina. He noticed that she was not very fond of the village and it could be bad. Could you tell us what are you planning to do, Lady Kushina? Asked. Kushina focused her violet eyes to him for a few seconds and over the rest of the council. She spoke. First of all you should know more about my situation. From my point of view it's has been only a few days since I was pregnant and I became a mother. Since my husband and I decided to offer our son to save this ungrateful village. Since I decided to join the defense of the village although I was still weak from the delivery, since I almost died for this village, said looking at them. Nobody said anything, many of them looked at other way, not wanting feel those eyes judging them. I woke up to find out that 11 years passed. To find out that my husband spent the last years wandering through the world trying to regain his memories. To find out that I lost my son's childhood. To find out that he has been living on his own without knowing about his parents. To find out that this council sabotaged all attempts to adopt him. To find out that Minato's request was ignored, the hero of this village dishonored. To find out that my son who should have been treated as a hero was treated like he had the plague. Tell me, what do you think I should do? Asked Kushina looking at the frightened council with murdering eyes. Nobody noticed the subtle killing intent that she was raising forth since the beginning of her rant. When she finished, all the counselors minus those who knew the truth were scared to death. Kushina got up. With the atmosphere she created and her beauty she almost looked like a goddess who descended to earth to judge them. She spoke again. Years ago, after I lost my family, I decided to not reclaim my birthright as the last heiress of Whirlpool and let my country be integrated into Fire Country and be under the protection of Konoha. For that reason I decided to become a Kunoichi to protect everyone and let them live happy. I found out that this village has been trying to deny my son this happiness after all the sacrifices we have made for them. Why should be my family part of a place like that? Asked. Nobody said anything. Why shouldn't I go and declare the independence of Whirlpool Country where my son would be treated not only as a human being, but also as a prince? I'm sure that the inhabitants of my former kingdom would receive us with open arms after they find out what happened and would be willingly to fight for their freedom, said her. Everybody paled. They realized that this woman could easily provoke a civil war within Fire Country. Donzo got up. Do you think you could threaten us like that? Your husband is powerful but he is no match for the combined forces of all Konoha ninjas, said the Warhawk. Arashi began to chuckle. Everyone looked at him. That's true. But we wouldn't be alone. As Jiraiya's disciple, my son signed a toad contract this morning. Game Ubuntu is not very fond of the village after what they did to Minato's memory. The Toads would be very happy to help us among many others, commented Arashi looking at Tsunade. Right, responded her. What? Asked Donzo in disbelief. The Uzumakis, being the ascendants of the Sanju, are the closest thing I have to a family and it was one of them who convinced me to come back to Konoha, said the blonde Sanin. Many counselors looked at Jiraiya waiting for an answer for his part. Unfortunately I wouldn't be able to intervene. Most my techniques are dependent to my binding with the Toads. As part of the contract I vowed to fight their enemies, if a conflict between them and Konoha happened I would have to renounce being Hokage and join them, said Jiraiya raising his shoulders. The counselors and the Fire Lord paled. With the Jiraiya and Tsunade on their side, a hypothetical rebellion on Whirlpool region would have real chances of success. Many began to protest until Kushina raised her killing intent gaining their attention again. I never said that I was going to start a war, it was just one of my possible choices to punish Konoha said her. Those words calmed them a little but then made them ask themselves about the other choices. W what are those possible C choices, Kushina-sama? Asked a civilian in a very respectful tone. Excellent. They finally realized your political power, my love? Thought Minato. Yes, I can't wait to see their faces when they hear this, thought her. She looked at the counselor. Do you know that the red spiral most Konoha ninjas wear is in reality Whirlpool country symbol and it was adopted by the Senju to honor their homeland, don't you? She asked. Everyone nodded, it was explained by Shizio Amui, also present there, when they accepted Zabuza as a leaf nin. Well, the Senju could use the symbol because we Uzumakis gave them permission. We are within our right to cancel that permission, said her. What? Asked everyone. Ku, ku, ku. She is right, said Shizio. Everyone looked at the historian. According to ancient heraldry laws, as member of Whirlpool's royal family, she she would be perfectly within her rights to ask for the retirement of the red spiral in Konoha. Not only that, she could ask the same with the spiral and the leaf symbol, the one that appear in all forehead protectors. Ku, 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 mentioned Shizio chuckling. 
Most ninjas put their hands in a protective way over their forehead protectors. It was also as bad as a civil war, Kushina could take away from Konoha their identity. You are very lucky, said her. Everyone looked at her. You are lucky that my son loves this village more than I ever had. When I said him about the things I could do he asked me to forget about it, that he forgave you all and wanted to start again from scratch with the villagers. I won't take retaliation towards the village. I'm also going to retake my duty as Kunoichi. I want you to remember this, we won't tolerate more crap from the village. Now if you excuse me, I would like to leave, said her. Jiraiya nodded and left her go. Arashi asked Jiraiya for permission to go with her and left the room too leaving a cage bunshine in his place. The Fire Lord looked at Konoha's council with a very angry face, something very rare taking account the daimyo's usual peaceful nature. What kind of idiots has this village? If you follow the Yondame's request none of this would have happened. Now this land's stability depends on the opinion that an angry mother has for this village. We are lucky that her son wants to be the leader of this village and saved you again, commented the Lord. Jiraiya, Tsunade and Sarutobi tried their best to look affected while internally they congratulated themselves by the success of their plan. As soon as Minato and Kushina left the room, they got into an empty room and shared kiss. They really fell for it, commented her. Yes, now nobody will dare to oppose him when Naruto would be ready to become Hokage. By the way, you look really sexy when you scared them, he whispered. Kushina giggled and shared another kiss with him. After a makeup session they left the room. Now we should go to train and prepare myself to rejoin Konoha's ninja forces, she commented. Minato nodded. Yes, the village already saw your political power. Now it's time to show them your power as a Kunoichi Iruga looked at the old building, reminding old times. Before the ninja villages decides to turn the Chunin exams into a simulation of war, this building was the place where the advanced genins from Konoha were examined to see if they were worth of being Chai Yunins. When peacetime came and the Kijas decides to make a global Chunin exam each semester, this place had no use and was abandoned. In fact Iruka was the last Konoha ninja who made Chunin in that place. He noticed that the building was newly renovated. What was going on? He guessed that Jiraiya-sama decided to reuse it for special tests. A week has passed since his encounter with Jiraiya. He headed to training ground number 47 accompanied by Anko just to find a note telling them to head to the old examination building. In their way to the place they met with Kushina, who was also heading there. He was glad to see that Anko and Kushina great friends, he knew that the ex-ghost Kunoichi didn't have any female friend when she returned. Anko introduced she and Shizun into a group of friends that consisted in Kurana Yuhi, Yuga Uzuki, Tsumei Nuzuka and her the strongest Kunoichis in Konoha. He bet that Kurunai and Tsume were already aware of Kushina's secret. They got into the building to see that inside it was a recreation of a forest with a tower in the center. It looks like a small recreation of the forest of death, minus for the small clearings, thought Anko. The teacher looked at Kushina why are you here, Lady Uzumaki? Did you come to watch the test? He asked. Kushina denied with her head. No. I came to made the required test that all off-duty ninjas must do before return to active service. I had to retire years ago because my pregnancy. And please don't call me Lady Kushina, you are going to make me feel like an old woman like Tsunade, responded Kushina. I heard you, said Tsunade's angry voice. Kushina looked nervously around her, looking for, Tsunade. We are watching you from the tower with the cameras which are strategically distributed by the building, said Jiraiya's voice. The ninjas finally noticed the small cams that were hidden among the vegetation. Jiraiya spoke in solemn tone. Umino Iruka, Chonin of Kanahaga Kaur, Mitarashi Anko, Tokubitsu Jonin of Kanahaga Kaur. You are there to be tested and prove that you are ready to be ranked as Jonins of Konoha. Your main objective in this test will consist in fighting the ninja groups who are dispersed and hidden in the forest. Those ninjas are ranked from Chonin to Jonin but you won't be guess who are you figging because all them will keep their identities in secret. You don't have to defeat all the ninjas, just as many as you can," said Jiraiya. Iruka wanted to slap his forehead. He practically forgot that Anko also wanted to become Jonin, luckily she didn't find out. On the bad side, Jiraiya's words reminded him where they were getting into. He half expected that his test would have been a fight against a Jonin or a small group of Chai Yunins, not an army of them, I know that this seems very unfair but you won't alone, Uzumaki Kushina, retired Jonin of Kanahaga Kaur. You will be fighting on Iruka and Anko's side as your test to see if you are ready to return to active duty," said Jiraiya. The redhead smiled, she was more than ready, she spent the last week training with her husband with a great success and thanks to Tsunade's checks she was finally aware of the true power of her new body. Flashback a room at Konoha's hospital, 
Two days ago Kushina was waiting for Tsunade's verdict about the extensive medical check she had to endure during the last days. That day they performed the last one and now the slug Sanin subjected the younger woman to various medical tests, physical exercises with machines checking Kushina's vitals and various analysis from her body tissues. The redhead almost lost her temper, she felt like a laboratory rat on Tsunade's. True, those tests were necessary to know what her body was capable for. She was getting a good idea about her new capacities thanks to the memories from the clones she had training with Minato. She never felt so strong when she was alive, Minato himself was impressed but he insisted that she need to keep with Tsunade's checks anyways. She would have vanalized my armpit hairs if I had them, thought Kushina. Said medic got into the room accompanied by Shizune and Hinata, who helped her to perform some of the tests. Hinata only helped to check Kushina's chakra coils with her Byakugan but they let her to watch during the last ones as part of her lessons. Kushina took away importance from the tests but they had the responses about some of the questions that have been intriguing her since her return. And well, Bachan? What's your final conclusion about my new body? Asked Kushina in a joking tone trying to hide her nervousness. Tsunade's eye twitched at the nickname. When she met Naruto again he talked to her with great respect, consequence of some of the manners that Minato managed to inculcate on him. But lately, coinciding with Kushina's return, he began to call her old, like his future self. So, she is the responsible. I almost forgot that Naruto inherited his attitude from her. I'm sorry for Minato, with her screwing around it will take Kami's will to manage to teach Naruto etiquette, thought Tsunade. She looked at Kushina while she held the folders with the results. First of all I want to thank you for your patience with the tests. Many of them were not necessary for an ordinary medical check but it was the first time that I had the chance to examine a real clone. Elemental clones are just constructs animated by chakra and cage bunshines to spell whenever we try to take samples, commented Tsunade. Yeah, yeah. What have you found out about me? Asked Kushina. Tsunade opened one of the folders. According to the description that Minato gave us about the process that revived you, what he did was to create a clone mixing the five elements to create a clone that got your DNA and your soul infused into it, commented Tsunade. Yes, yes, we know that, interrupted Kushina with impatience. What I want to remark is that the infusion of your DNA and your soul in the process was the only thing that kept your actual body to be an exact clone of Minato controlled by a mind completely equal to his, a perfect cage bunshine to understand. For that reason your actual body is similar to Minato's in many things, said Tsunade. What do you mean with a perfect cage bunshine and my body being equal to Minato in many things? Asked Kushina puzzled. Tsunade handed Kushina two folders. One was labeled as Arashi Uzumaki and other as Kushina Uzumaki. Kushina opened them to see that they were profiles with their physical and mental stats among their abilities, as you noticed, these are your personal profiles from the Hokage's office, very confidential, Jirai lent me Minato's after I finished to update yours with the tests. Please compare them, said Tsunade. Kushina nodded and looked both files. It was a bit annoying to see that her husband was better than her in such important things like ninjutsu, taijutsu or intelligence. The only advantage she had over him was that she had the water and earth chakra affinities while she was on par with him in the physical stats. Wait. Is this true? Exclaimed surprised while she looked at the profiles. Yes, it is. Shizun please explain it, said Tsunade looking at the brunette woman. Shizun took the word. As you can see your strength, speed and stamina are equal to Minato's, who is one of the most complete shinobis alive in those stats. A cage bunshine has the same capabilities as its creator. Because the blood clone is a perfect cage bunshine your body has the same capabilities as Minato's with the exception of DNA, gender and physical traits like appearance or weight, said Shizune in an enthusiastic tone. So I'm physically more capable than most ninjas and almost all men, thought Kushina fascinated. Not only that, but you also got a part of Minato's bloodline, commented Shizune. What do you mean? I noticed that I don't heal faster than a normal person when you took samples from me, said Kushina. Do you have any signs from those wounds? Asked Shizun. Kushina looked her body parts where they took tissues from to realize that there were not scars, her skin looked completely untouched. I I have the perfect healing feature, commented Kushina in awe. Tsunade nodded. Yes, you won't have to worry about getting scars or ending crippled from severe wounds, you still will need to spend as much time in the hospital as a normal ninja if you get injured but you won't have to worry about sequels, said Tsunade before looking at Hinata. Hinata. Explain Kushina about her chakra network, said the blonde woman to the shy girl who turned pale. Kushina looked at Hinata with a comforting smile that calmed her down. The Hyuga girl began her explanation. W well, 
Kushina-san, when I analyzed your chakra network I saw that your chakra coils are really developed and capable to conduct huge amounts of chakra. See coinciding with the explanation that Shizun-san made before, your chakra network is very similar to Minato-san's with the obvious exceptions caused by the P physical differences. Hinata said this part blushing, why you have have as much chakra as Minato-san's, M more than Tsunade Shisu or any other woman in Konoha's story, Kushina-san, she said. Wow. Really? Am I really the best woman in chakra capacity in Konoha? Asked Kushina excited. Shizun and Tsunade nodded smiling although the last one was a bit annoyed for being dethroned. Yes it is, Kushina-san, said Hinata. Come on Hinata-chan, don't call me like that. I told that you can call me mom, said Kushina making the poor girl blush. The other women decided to join the redhead. You can call her like that, Hinata? I didn't know that you were so close to Naruto, teased Tsunade with a sly smile. So young and already with a boyfriend? You are very lucky, Hinata-chan, said Shizun. Oink, oink, agreed Taitan. The poor Hinata was so embarrassed that she couldn't reply. Kushina decided to stop teasing her and change the subject quickly. What about the other thing I asked you to check? Asked looking concerned. Tsunade took another folder. Yes, I send the data from that check to the head gynecologist keeping your identity in secret and I got the results two hours ago, said Tsunade. And well? Asked Kushina nervous. Congratulations, Kushina. You are completely able to bear children, your body is as fertile as a healthy woman's in her 20s. Are you planning to rebuild your clan soon? Said Tsunade. The older woman's words made Kushina really happy, she feared that her clone body couldn't be able to make her a mother again. Minato said her that she shouldn't feel bad if it was the case she knew that he would blame it into himself for being the one who revived her. I I see. Thank you very much, Tsunade, but not. I'm not planning to have more children at the moment. Now that I know that I'm capable to fight I'm going to join the Kunoichi's contraceptive program. Don't misinterpret me. This notice made me really happy and there's nothing I would wish more than having another child. But with the Akatsuki's menace I can't take the risk to end pregnant and become an easy target. Besides, now I have the chance to fight against Naruto's enemies, you don't know how useless I felt when I only could watch. Now they will find out what is waiting for those who dare to threat my son, said Kushina with determination on her eyes. Hinata looked at Kushina with awe. The redhead was really Naruto's mother and the attitude she exhibited was the thing that made her to be interested in the blonde at first and later fell for him. Kushina looked at the Hyuga. I'm sorry Hinata-chan, but you'll have to wait until we finish our enemies before you have a brother or sister-in-law, joked her. Those words finally made Hinata faint between the giggles of the older women. And flashback Kushina was so abstracted with her thoughts that she almost missed the rules of the test when Jiraiya told them, your adversaries only can attack you in groups of three. You are not allowed to kill or cause wounds that would cripple your opponents, that will be an instant disqualification. The tower in the center of the complex is a safe haven where you could rest, Tsunade will be there to help you if you need healing but the exam will be considered finished for those who ask for their help. These are the rules. Good luck, said Jiraiya's voice. Excellent, if they only can attack us in groups of three we have chances to defeat them all, commented Anko in an optimistic tone. Kushina agreed with her. Iruka for his part was not very confident. Later the three Chaiyunins looked how their targets advanced with caution keeping a triangle formation with Kushina at the front and Anko and Iruka at the sides. Tanaka, meet Suki. Take the prefixed positions, we are going to active our first trap, said Hiroshi. The other Chaiyunins nodded and disappeared. Hiroshi waited until the three aspirants got into the small trail surrounded by bushes, hours ago they hid some electrified wires in those bushes. They wouldn't kill them but they were powerful enough to incapacitate the examinees, their second trap was a hanging rock that would make them jump toward the bushes if they didn't want to be crushed by it. When Kushina, Ongo and Iruka were just behind the rock, Hiroshi activated the trap, letting the rock fall and dispelling the genjutsu that hit it. They don't have time to do the hand seals for a jutsu, they must jump to the bushes, he thought. However, instead of jumping to a side, Kushina looked upwards while the others ducked. A blue sphere appeared on her hand. Rasengan, she exclaimed while she hit the rock pulverizing it. Hiroshi was shocked, he knew about the existence of the Rasengan and that it was one of Arashi's techniques but he couldn't imagine that she would know it. She was a Jonin a decade ago, I shouldn't be surprised. Now it's my teammate's turn, thought. Tanaka prepare himself to throw the kunais with explosive tags. Mitsuki appeared from behind the examinees and attacked them with a jutsu. Sutan, Tepodama, 
exclaimed while he shot a series of water bullets at them with the purpose to make them focus on him while Mitsuki attacked them with the kunais. They looked surprised how Onko and Diruka didn't try anything to dodge them, the water bullets and the kunais passed through them. Shit. They are bunshines, realized Mitsuki. However Kushina was not a bunshine, quickly, she took one of the exploding kunais and threw it to Mitsuki. The surprised Chunin had no choice but to jump towards the bushes where he received an electric discharge that knocked him. Tanaka and Hiroshi got nervous. Where are Onko and Iruka? Thought Hiroshi. Then he felt a kunai's blade on his neck. Give up, now Onko should have caught your remaining teammate, said Iruka with a serious tone. Hiroshi accepted his defeat. Later, in a clearing, the examinees looked at the three tied Chai Yunins. Well, well. I hope that our prisoners wouldn't want to play heroes and refuse to tell us who else are we going to face in this test, won't they? Asked Anko in a playful manner. Sorry, but we don't know their identities or their numbers, a precaution for cases like this, said an already awake Mitsuki, however, we can say you that your next opponents are hitting behind that grove, said Tanaka. Anything else? Asked Kushina. No, responded Tanaka. I dealed with enough academy students to know that they are lying, said Iruga. Anko looked at them with a sadistic smile and took off a kunai. The rule said that we couldn't kill or cripple them, but they didn't say anything about causing pain or scars, she commented while she licked the weapon. Hiroshi was smart enough to realize that there were no real reasons to not tell them about the trap that was in the way to the grove, they were not hiding crucial information for the village, this was just a test. The path to the grove passes through is full of hidden mines. They are not powerful enough to kill you but they will delay you while the others prepare themselves. And no. We are not going to tell you where they are, said Hiroshi before swallowing the sleeping pill he had hidden on his mouth. His teammates did the same and soon they were sleeping. Iruka looked at the minefield trying to figure out a way to overpass. Luckily his wasp knowledge of Militar story as a teacher let him find an answer. When he turned to tell the plan to his teammates he saw that Kushina and Anko took off the prisoners clothes leaving them in their underwear and putting them in very compromising positions. Naruto got his personality from Kushina. The mischievous nature was inherited from her, thought. Iruka took all the kunais from the prisoners and explained his plan to the women. Then he began to throw the kunais to the field, some kunais activated some mines while the rest were embebbed on the ground. Okay, follow me, said Iruka while he towards the field. The teacher crossed the field stepping on the kunais with quick jumps, Kushina and Anko watched him with an approving look and followed him. None of them was aware of the small crow who watched everything. It disappeared in a cloud of smoke and reappeared where his master Yamashiro Abo was waiting accompanied by other jonins. The bespectacled jonin inform his comrades about the performance of the examinees. Hmm? They are resourceful and skilled. Those hidden in the grove won't have any chance against them. I bet that they will manage to defeat the other teams and we will have to intervene at the end, commented Sarutobi Asuma while he took another cigar eat. Cough, cough, well, I hope so, cough. It will be a good chance to test the weapon that the Hokage put into my custody, said Gekko Hayate while he held the Raijin, the sword of the Nidaim Hokage. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.